Hey guys, so this is the second part uh, of the video on uh, my pistol K1. Uh, this has probably been one of the most uh, anticipated and request for video on my channel so far, so I'm really happy to be finally be able to record it. Um, so let's first get very quickly through what I'm talking about. So if you didn't watch the first video, uh, I took action so this part is the action from the K1 bullpup uh, gun uh, and I made a pistol out of it. So basically I took the action and the cylinder, the regulated part of the cylinder and everything else I built myself. So this is a prototype, this is a, not a, a gun for that is available out there for purchase, it's just a, my prototype. Um, okay, so um, for those of you that didn't watch it, I recommend that you first watch uh, part number one to get the information because I will continue uh, on in this video from that uh, that one, and you can find the link for the first first video in the description below. Okay, so first off, uh, we will be showing you. Of, uh, I will be showing you, of course, uh, uh, accuracy in th this video. So this will be probably towards the end of the video. Uh, but first, I want to discuss the added features that I was able to make in the time between the release of the first video and this one. So the thing that you can see immediately is the uh, end cap of the cylinder is not different. That's because I made this one myself. I will explain the reason why I wanted to do this. It's uh, mainly because the original takes up a lot of uh, uh, available air volume in the cylinder. So uh, this is one of the reasons. I will discuss this more in a little bit. Uh, and the second thing is I actually now have the regulator inside. I already also mentioned in the first video that I also already tested this before but I didn't like it because of the shot count and now with this end cap I do have the regulator inside. So let's first uh, take it uh, apart in terms of uh, uh, me be able, being able to show you the end cap and the regulator inside. So first of all I have the gun empty and uh, I will just remove only the things that is necessary in order to be able to take the cylinder off. So let's take this off. Okay. Now we can just unscrew the cylinder. There's no need to uh, disassemble anymore. You can watch the almost full disassembly in the video part one. So uh, this is there is a lot of thread, and this thread is really um, uh, has a small step. It's a one millimeter thread. So first of all, as you can see, there is no O-ring here. That's because, of course, I have the regulator inside and the regulator needs to be vented. So in here you can see the regulator. I will take it out now. Okay. So this is the regulator that is adapted for this um, tube. And as you can see, it has one seal here. This is for the high pressure side. And one seal is actually I made a groove in here. So it presses up against this surface and seals this way. So this part fits exactly inside. So the, all the air, the, basically the plenum is what is in here, only this space in here. So it's a small plenum, but keep in mind that plenum size, the, the required plenum size basically is, uh, uh, depends on the caliber and uh, uh, barrel length. Basically it depends on the volume of the barrel. So the bigger the caliber and the longer the barrel, the bigger volume the whole barrel has. So it's perfectly enough. Uh, now the regulator is uh, from Huma, so it's a modified Huma regulator and Huma uh, in my experience goes accurately up to about 170 bars. So that's its uh, current uh, setting, so I have it to, to 170 bars. With these settings I am still getting about max 45 joules, which is probably somewhere around 30 foot-pounds, something like that. Um, 
so it's still plenty uh, of course it is a little uh, lower max power but then again I wasn't shooting in max power anyway because uh, at max power of course uh, the shotgun is extremely low and um, uh, because of that uh, you want to have a couple of shots more you reduce the power anyway now in the first video I explained that the reason why I wasn't using the regulator is because with the regulator I get very low shot count so now I'll take the end cap off because the end cap is the reason why I'm able to to have uh, let's say an acceptable amount of shots at acceptable power even with the regulator because you have to know that once you put the regulator inside the tube you are actually reducing the tube size by the volume of the regulator plus the plenum because the plenum is not part of the your air reservoir it's just the constant pressure that you always need to have so it's like uh, unused space in terms of shot count it's only plus one shot let's say uh, so in the first video I mentioned that the thing is that uh, if you have a regulator in and you have the original end cap basically you have it screwed like this and if you take a look at this basically there is almost almost no air right only this part in between is the unregulated air the high pressure air so this one is not hollow it's full because of the it's design because it's uh, this part goes out and uh, this part is used by uh, by the cap and this one is actually empty it's actually hollow and it's hollow right to the end so uh, this gives me a lot more air uh, and if you screw this in now the the, the diameter from uh, diameter from here on it's smaller but still there is a lot of additional air here that would not be with the original end cap so uh, now with uh, making a part of like this it's this is very critical so uh, any of you that uh, wants to build something like that on your own this is a high pressure part of course and this uh, not only has to be done correctly and tested properly uh, uh, it has to also be made out of proper material so this is actually aluminum 7075 so it's uh, the, the one of the most durable aluminum for uh, these purposes and uh, the Tolerance, tolerances are extremely tight of threading it in and the thickness of that wall is still 3.5 millimeters and as well as the front wall so it's more than enough to withstand the pressure but even with this kind of let's say uh, uh, cautious behavior I still made the threads slightly longer than on the original it will be hard to see this so it's a bit longer than on the original the, the threads itself I mean and uh, not only that, uh, the tolerances are even tighter, so it's really tight to screw it in. This is really important, especially since we have a, such a, a tiny thread. And even with all those precautions, what I did is when I put this uh, uh, one-way uh, fill nipple on it, I first put it without the one-way valve, valve. I put everything together. I put everything in a blanket, put it behind the wall and then I filled it to 330 bars which is the maximum I can get on my compressor. So I wanted to do this test first before I ever filled it to a high pressure and I left it that way for uh, I don't know 30 minutes or something like that. After that I drain it and after that in my perspective it's considered safe. Of course you never know with high pressure so you are cautious you always have to be cautious let's put it in this way so um, the thing I made different of course because the original uh, Huben uh, end cap has uh, uh, port for filling uh, via Huben probe as probably you guys I prefer just to have the quick fill nipple it's so much easier don't need uh, uh, any uh, um, uh, 
converters or any uh, for different manufacturers you can just have one you know and uh, there is no problems with leaking and things like that and this works excellent it does destroy the looks a little bit however I agree about that but you know what I I'm I'm willing to accept a little, uh, let's say, less attractive gun for a little more practical gun, especially uh, uh, a lot more uh, air reservoir volume. Uh, as, I as I was mentioning the volume, the, the shot count did not increase dramatically with unregulated gun because this portion is still the largest volume but if you put the regulator in and you limit that big portion of volume then you really gain a lot by adding this uh, hollow uh, part uh, right now of course this is just a bare uh, aluminum part i do intend to uh, anodize it it's just that uh, i don't regularly anodize i wait for things to pile up for parts to pile up and then after a certain period of time then i anodize everything because anodizing is really a messy job and I, I kind of hate doing it but uh, it's still the best way to do it yourself because you pay attention to which part of the part is really nicely anodized you pay attention to um, how is the finish before you anodize and things like that so uh, so that's it on the mods so as you can see this is everything is really simple to assemble or disassemble Everything else is the same as it was before. Uh, now, uh, when we get to the accuracy part, you will see that uh, I actually get really respectable accuracy with both uh, and unregulated as well as regulated. Regulated, but as it is typical with um, unregulated guns. I do get first couple of shots lower, which is very typical because acceleration at uh, high pressures is faster, meaning that the pellet or the bullet, whatever you're shooting, will exit sooner the barrel and the muzzle flip did not take place as far yet. Of course, the muzzle flip at that point is minimum, but still it affects accuracy. You can see this very clearly actually uh, at uh, 25 meters that I was shooting for accuracy. And uh, this is something that really can be only be solved uh, with... Um, this is something that really can be solved only if you have the gun regulated. Okay, so fully assembled and uh, now let's get to the accuracy. So for accuracy uh, in most uh, of the clips you will see from now on, I was e actually using this uh, optic uh, red dot, uh, so holographic sight. It's very easily mounted on the Picatinny rail that I put on it. Now, I didn't expect really extreme accuracy for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's a very short pistol. I mean, I didn't know what I expected. The barrel, it's, uh, it's very good actually, but I didn't know that at the time because it's just a gun or uh, a brake barrel, uh, uh, barrel gun, uh, air gun barrel inside. Uh, and also this part is actually only mounted with this piece everything else is just plastic so it it doesn't really wobble around but it's not as rugged as it could be if uh, if you really intend to have the rail for uh, some advanced sights so for the accuracy i was actually extremely surprised so uh, I will just show you the results first and uh, later on you will see uh, the videos, the clips of how I made these groups. So first of all uh, I was testing the uh, unregulated gun and uh, you can see here groups. So mark with one, um, where is number two, two, three. So, one, two, three, and four. These are all with unregulated guns. Uh, sorry, unregulated uh, pistol. Um, and you can clearly see, and you will see this in the course of the clips. First shot, second shot, third, and from there on everything in same group. Uh, this was done, most of this was done at quite high powers. 
So this one was, for example, at this was all 10 shots at 40 to 43.5 joules. Uh, so quite high power. So this is 30 to 32 about foot pounds of energy. You have also here velocity. This was mo with monsters, and uh, basically all groups with unregulated pistol show the same pattern. Uh, I got a little bit different with beasts. I guess that's because they are heavy and even though it's higher pressure and the acceleration is faster, they still don't exit as the barrel as fast because they're just so heavy and slower. So the group was a little better, although the beasts didn't perform well at uh, longer ranges than 25 yards. So at 50 meters, uh, this was tw 25 meters, so about 27, 28 yards, something like that. So at 50 meters, the group with beasts did not hold up anymore. Uh, and so I think that monster is correct decision for, let's say, heavy projectile and for the light one, I also shoot with uh, JSB's uh, Jumbo Heavy, so the 18 grains. Uh, so same pattern here you go, so same here and higher, higher with uh, higher sh uh, the m more the pressure dropped, same here first, second, and then higher. But the groups are actually excellent if you consider this. You have to consider that uh, the optic side, the holographic side, the dot is almost the size of this circle uh, at 25 meters. So it's actually, I'm really, really happy with this. And then I went from uh, uh, unregulated to regulated gun. Of course, this is uh, second day after that. And uh, you have groups here marked with uh, number and R with it. So this one was actually the first group. Uh, I will put a picture of this on the side so it will be clearly to uh, be able to see it. So this is the first group which is not whole because it was under the target. But this is the first one and this one was uh, with uh, a relatively low power, so 26.5 joules. Um, and then I boost up the power for the second one and I got here, so, oh no sorry, this is still with the same power. No, it, it is with the high power. So sorry, this was with uh, this was with uh, uh, 26.5 joule. And this, uh, so this is about 20 foot pounds. And over here I boosted with uh, jumbo heavy, with uh, at 26 foot pound or 35 joule, joules. Now this is actually my favorite setup, um, and uh, we will get to shot counts in a bit. Uh, this is actually my favorite setup. The gun is extremely accurate. The power is really high and also the velocity is, is really respectable so over 800 feet per, se feet per second so and actually I did this group 10 shots and this one including this flyer here in the same um, with the same fill this was uh, about 270 bar fill and I was managed managed to do 10 shots here and additional 6 plus 1 here although this 6 were still on the rack but this one was uh, under the regulator already so really really tight groups and really nice shot count uh, <laughs> it's hard to say anything bad about it. And then I switched to JSB uh, Monsters and you have with the same power settings here, uh, so this is 28 foot-pounds or about 38 joules, uh, a really really nice group. Uh, this one could be me, it could be the gun, it's the pistol, it's hard to say, I mean, it's really hard to know, even these uh, optical sights have some parallax, so if you're not looking completely uh, with the dot completely in the middle of the window, it's highly likely that you are uh, including a little bit parallax, but still excellent group. And this is number four, so again, excellent, again, the, about the same energy. So I'm really, really happy with the results here. The accuracy is excellent. Okay, so let's get to the shot count with uh, this end cap and the regulator at 170 bars. Um, now my favorite setup is 2.5 revolution from minimum on the power wheel. 
at this setup I'm getting 35 to 38 joules which is about 26 to 28 foot pounds uh, and I'm getting from uh, 250 bar fill uh, 10 shots I can give, of course go to 300 bar fill but realistically you almost never have the bottle at 300 bars. I mean, you have it for first couple of minutes uh, after you uh, fill it, but after that, it's always at lower pressure. So I want to give the numbers at uh, realistic uh, initial fill pressures. So basically, you can, of course, without a problem with this end cap charge and the regulator will hold to 300 bars. I wouldn't go further, but at 300 bars, you will get probably about 16 17 shots so almost the full magazine at that power so that's quite impressive if you ask me and uh, it's also really fun to shoot at uh, these powers and also you can shoot a longer range because if you shoot JSB heavies which are uh, 18 grains it's they're flying over 800 feet per second and the BC is reasonable at, with, for that pellet you can shoot at 50 meters with very minimal drop I mean, uh, you will also see how I show you in the video. I was also, uh, uh, I also made uh, some low uh, power uh, settings and uh, test at uh, those uh, powers. And uh, that was actually uh, with only one revolution from minimum. With that setting, you can charge to less than 250 bars and you get over 20 shots of at least full magazine. Uh, the powers, the velocity was, I think, 700 feet per second, about uh, 175 to 180 meters per second. Well, that's low power. I think it's about uh, 18, 19 joules or 14 or 15 foot pounds. Uh, for pistols, I mean, a lot of pistols actually, this is the maximum that, that they reach, uh, but um, uh, with that settings, I actually was shooting at 70 meters, just for fun, just for, just uh, more, more of a joke than anything else. But once I figure out my aim, and by the way, I was doing that with uh, open sight, so no red dot for that, I was able to hit uh, 16 centimeters so what 16 centimeters is what six seven seven inches probably uh, circle uh, every time <laughs> so it was really fun it was really windy so the pellet also got blown to one side or another but I hit it every time once I knew where to aim so uh, the gun is definitely accurate I mean if you can shoot uh, long range and uh, hopefully I will be able to test and give you some videos also on uh, uh, trying this to do this at 100 meters at higher powers and with let's say with uh, monsters which is more appropriate for those kind of ranges because this is really fun and I, I gotta say that all the videos that I recorded I simply put the cameras and started to record I didn't Think. I didn't test first, I didn't do anything first, simply because, well, one of the reasons is I usually do it this way because I want to give you an, um, a realistic view of how something operates, not just cherry pick the best uh, uh, videos from accuracy and then show you only that and nothing else. Uh, this is one part, and the second part is simply that this fun is so, f uh, this gun is so fun to shoot that uh, I kind of don't like to mess around with cameras and uh, uh, having to uh, set everything up each time before I start uh, the shoot. It's kind of a pain with this gun because as soon as it's loaded, you know, you just want to pick it up and start <laughs> pulling the trigger uh, because just because it's so ridiculously easy. Uh, maybe something I didn't mention in the first video the trigger pull on this one is extremely light and it's extremely crisp crisp it's a uh, two-way i this is kind of my way of adjusting hoovers and actually most guns that can be adjusted this way i usually have a very very short first stage and uh, relatively light not extremely light like some do and the second is most important for me that it's very short and 
if possible also not too heavy so in this case of course the gun is now empty so I cannot show you how short the second stage is because it travels more than it requires for it to uh, trigger but still it's really really light so it's really easy to shoot accurately because you can just aim and then just start to pull just gently no no additional pressure or grab is needed and you can let the gun recoil as it wants to and of course this gun does recoil because the weight of this gun is actually only uh, one kilogram so one kilogram is 2.2 .2 pounds i think yeah something like that so it's reasonably light i mean it's not light in general but uh, for a pcp pistol this is not really heavy there is one more mod that i really wanted to do but i doubt that uh, i will ever be able to do it because it's too complicated and too risky what i wanted to have is to leave this whole uh, cylinder unregulated and have the regulator just inside of this uh, narrower part which is now actually the plenum and then i wanted to have the plenum inside the grip that would be perfect i mean that would mean that you still have the full size of reservoir to be able to charge it to 300 full 300 bars and the plenum size would be relatively big you don't need much bigger than this right now but a little bigger would help of course i could reach i don't know 50 or 60 joules so 35 40 uh, foot close to 40 foot pounds as it is with unregulated for example but of course this is it's really hard to do because of the design so it's not easy to access and i would have to make changes to the action in that uh, in uh, with this mod and i don't want to do this and uh, because um, uh, one of the things about this pistol is that uh, i can at any time disassemble uh, this pistol and reassemble it as a k1 bullpup gun so i don't want to make uh, changes that would not allow me to uh, assemble it back as a gun as a bullpup gun i should say okay so i think i covered everything uh thank you guys really for uh, all the kind messages you, uh, you sent me regarding this video i saw that uh, it's this topic was this uh, video was extremely popular and it was extremely fun for me so that's cool that uh, uh, something I like to do very much is also uh, something that you like and um, uh, hopefully if I make any further mods or at least further videos I will maybe even make a, a video part 3 of the K1 pistol. Maybe.
Okay, I'm not sure where I'm hitting, so I'll just continue in this group. Empty. Okay. Now let's try a little more to get this. Okay. Let's continue this way. You have to know that I can hardly distinguish a red dot from the target in the background. Wow! Now, that's something I didn't expect. <laughs> okay, I, it's still on the ground, so I'll try to hit it just where it is. Let's try to hit the smaller one. I got it. <laughs> Guys, this is 55 yards, it's 50 meters. Again! <laughs> this is ridiculous. Again! Three times in a row. Okay, empty. I'll show you again just so you can see what I'm seeing. So OK. 
Okay, so there's the red dot. It's much bigger than the... And of course I don't see it magnifying there like you see it now. And also this uh, optics gets quite a bit of parallax if you check. For example, if I go like this, you can see that the dot is actually moving compared to the target. Also up, down, see? It's quite okay, but still. Now, the smallest one that I hit right now is actually four centimeters, so that's uh, less than two inches, so about 1.7, 1.8 inches <laughs> at 50 meters, 55 yards. That's nice, very accurate, and still unregulated. A really high power, uh, pushing it at about, uh, it, this is about 30 foot pounds, I think with, uh, of course, JSB uh, monster redesigns. Uh, it also works quite well with beasts, but uh, not at long ranges, so 25 meters, so about 30 yards is perfectly okay. Still, I get like one group, but more than that, it start to, starts to, I guess the pellet is just not stable anymore at longer ranges. But I'm really happy with this, I'm really happy. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have only one camera today, so I will be just shooting the target and I will let you know the velocities as I shoot. Two hundred thirteen. Two hundred twelve point five. Two hundred thirteen. Two hundred twelve point five. Two hundred thirteen point three, two hundred fourteen point two. Okay, two hundred fourteen point five. That's ten shots. Two hundred forty six point three, two hundred forty six point four, two hundred forty six point five. Two hundred forty six point two, two hundred forty six point seven, two hundred forty five point three. Two hundred two hundred forty-three point nine. We still seem to be on the rack. Two hundred forty-three point nine. Two hundred forty point seven. We, we might be under. Uh, this was nine shots, so we have one more. 
Ah, we're still on the regulator. 242.9. We still seem to be on the regulator, so I will put a few more pellets in. Let's go for uh, a different group, so we don't mess this one up. 245.6 We are under the rack definitely now, but the velocity is still okay. Two hundred forty one point six. Let's put a few more in. Let's go until we drop under, let's say, two hundred and thirty five. Same group. Two hundred thirty eight point one. 233.6 okay <laughs> Two hundred eighteen point one, two hundred seventeen point seven, two hundred seventeen point four, still on the rag, two hundred seventeen point eight. And that was 10 shots, we, and we are just on the limit of the regulator. Two hundred seventeen point five, two hundred seventeen point six. Not what shot that was. Yeah, we're done.
So I forgot to mention before, uh, the initial charging pressure was 260 bars. So let's do the same thing again. Uh, only I know that uh, I was too low on the small circle before. I hit something. It's funny, I see actually the pallet flying just over the sides <laughs> after each shot. Got a few more. Let's try to hit it again. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, now I know where to aim. Okay, and we are still on the rag. Uh, it's just about for a 20 shots when I have this kind of settings. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, please, if you haven't subscribed, uh, thumbs up and click the bell button to, uh, to get a notification of my new videos. Uh, I will be shortly having more videos on ergon physics, so that was also a topic that was really warm, uh, warmly accepted amongst you guys. I really um, was surprised about that and uh, uh, I thank you guys for that. Okay, see you at the next one.